In this video, I'll show you how to dissolve any object in Blender using some basic shader nodes and a particle system. Even Thanos couldn't do it this good himself. So let's get started, let's get in. All right, so I've opened up this Blender file. I've got this going. So if you wanna follow along, set up something similar for yourself. What I have here is a text object with some basic extrusion. And what I've also done is added in a very, very simple metal shader. Now I will show you how we'll use this HDRI later on. Even with a black background, we'll still use the HDRI lighting. So that's a great tip to have to so stick around for that. I wanna start off by creating the dissolve material. And to do that, I am going to start off by adding in a new object, which I'm gonna to rotate to face the camera, by the way. You could do this on the text object yourself. I will do this on a separate plane and I will show you why later on. So let's go ahead and start here. And we have our plane set up and ready to go. Let's take this into the shading workspace and hit new to create a new material, which I'm gonna call the soul. All right, so with that material done, let's delete our principal BSDF, turning our plane completely black. We are going to start off by adding in a noise texture, which will be the base for this entire effect. Now, if we hit control shift and click on this, we can preview this noise texture node. If this doesn't work for you, very important, you should have it enabled. Everyone should have it enabled. Go into add-ons and make sure you look up Node Wrangler and enable this add-on. It's free, comes with Blender, and you definitely need it for doing any type of shading and uh, really making your life a little bit easier. All right, so with our noise texture, selected and previewed by control shift clicking on our noise texture here we are now going to change something and what we want to do is you want to have some control over whether the effect is black or white and we can use a math node for this plug it in between and set it to less than now what you'll see is basically these cow spots if you will and effectively what the less than node did is it took these values which were all ranged from zero to one so white to black or black to white that is and what it did is it re-inputted into two thresholds. It's either black or white. Now, the threshold for this is this value over here. Now, if we change this value, you will see we can actually change the amount of black or white we get overall. This is what we'll use to transition the effect. However, we also want the glowing edges. And to do that, we are going to add in another math node, which we're going to set to greater than. Let's take the noise texture again and plug that into the greater than node. Now let's preview this guy. As you see, this is the exact opposite of the less than. So now this is black and this is white. And on the greater than, it's the exact opposite. That's what we want. However, we want a slight variation between the two. So if we now add these two together, so combine them via another math node that is. So math add, just take this one, plug it into the bottom. Let's take the greater than and plug it into the top. And now let's preview this guy. We'll get a completely white surface. And that makes sense because all the spots that are white on this one, are now added together with all the spots that are white on this one. And what we can change is this threshold on the less than value. And if we change this to anything else, you will see we are getting these edges now. So what I wanna do is I wanna set this basically 0.01 less than the greater than node. And I wanna do this procedurally and control it via one value. So let's do it with another math node. Let's duplicate the less than here, set it to subtract and plug that into the threshold. Now let's subtract 0.01 and now let's add in a value. So let's take our value node here, plug it before there and plug this into the top value of the subtract node and also plug it into the threshold for the greater than. Do not use this value, use the actual value. So what we have now is we have this value, it gets fed into this subtract node, it subtracts 0.01 and feeds this into the less than node. For here, it just uses the regular value. So this will always offset it this much so you get an edge that moves along with it. Now, if I increase this value, you will see that this works perfectly. All right, so that works, super happy with it. We can animate this value later on to actually do the effect entirely. All right, so next up, what we wanna do is we wanna use this and actually create the transition effect as well as masking things out. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a mix shader, take the add value and let's set that as the factor here and take this guy and plug it into the surface. Now we can delete the viewer node and it will be completely black because we are just adding in this mask basically and we have two black shaders uh, in which it switches. So next up, let's add in a emission shader and take this into the bottom socket of our mix shader here. If I now set this to a, you know, color, so you can actually see what's going on like this one. And I set the value over here to a high number, something like 50 or so. You will see that this is working, except it's inverted. 
we want all the black parts to be the emission shader and we want all the other parts to be black. Luckily for us, there's this handy note called an invert note. So let's just plug that in between and voila, that fixed it. Now you might think, why aren't we using this input over here? And that's because we'll use it later on to actually input the original material for any object that you choose and you plug it in there. And this will automatically make it so that the effect still works, but also still shows the original material for the object here. So let's just leave that alone for now and let's add in another mix shader and put it in between there. In this case, I'm gonna add in a transparent node, take that here and plug it into the bottom socket of our next mix shader here. Now, if I switch all the way over here to the right, you will see it becomes completely black. Basically, this means the object is now completely transparent. However, in EV, we need to change some settings to actually make sure that it is transparent. So let's go over to the material tab here into the settings and let's make sure we set the blend mode to alpha blend. And this will make sure that everything is now transparent. And if you've done it right, you should see something similar to this. So now we have this slider to toggle between being completely transparent and being not transparent at all. What we can do is we can add in another factor here and make sure that it only shows up the right parts. And we'll actually use this less than node. So if we just take this less than value and plug it into the factor of the mix shader, you will see this is starting to work. We now have some black parts, which is what will show the original material for the original object. And we still have the edges working as well. And if we now change this value, we can switch from one texture all the way to transparent. So that works perfectly fine and it's looking very, very nice. What we want to do next to make this easy to work with basically any object you want is we want to select all of these nodes, except the value node, very important, and then hit control G. This will group all of them together into a group, which you can see because of this icon over here. If I click it, I will exit the group. And if I click on this icon over here, I will go into the group again. And in here we have a group input node, which we'll use to actually expose some values, which we can control outside of our group, which is nice because we want to control as much as possible without having to navigate over to the shading workspace every time. Now we already have the value node, which is the transition. And I also want to control the scale of the noise texture. And while we're at it, let's hit control T on the noise texture to add in the mapping and texture coordinate nodes. And let's make sure we're using the object texture coordinate. And that's because sometimes you use objects that have weird UV maps, uh, for example, text has it as well. By using the object texture coordinate, we can make sure that it always works on any object. So let's take that, plug that in there. And finally, what I want to do is I want to expose the emission color. So let's plug that in there as well. And let's hit and go into the group here and let's make sure we change these names so they make sense. So I'm going to call this value over here, the transition. This is going to be the noise skill, and this can be the emission color. Very simple, right? Also, let's just up the detail a little bit on the noise texture and that's all we need to do. Now we can exit our group here. And what you'll see is that we have this node group over here with the value node as well. And we can still control the effect by increasing or decreasing this value over here. We can change the emission color by clicking over here and just changing it. And we can also change the noise scale to be anything that we want. Also, we can do this over here in the materials tab. So that's very convenient for tweaking this outside of our shading workspace. So like I said, I used a different object to create this node group and I want to show you why. Um, and that's because now we have this node group over here and I could just control C copy it. And this is how you would do it with any other object as well. So import the object that you want to use this effect on, you know, enable it, show it in the viewport. And then again, in the original plane object, let's control C our node group. And then in the text object, in this case, let's just paste it in, you know, it's simple like that. I'm just going to hide the plain object. And over here, what we can do now is we can take this node group and plug it into the surface for our material output here. And that should work. So now we have the text effect, we have the emission, but it's still black. And that's because this is a different material, which doesn't have the blend mode set up correctly. So go over to the material settings again into blend mode and change it to alpha blend. And you'll see this is working just Fine. What you'll also see is that if I now switch back to the original metal material, that since we enabled the alpha blend mode, it kind of made things look weird. And that's because we need to enable backface culling as well for this kind of object. So let's make sure you have that enabled. And now let's plug in the node group again. All right. So this is the emissive effect and it's working nicely. Now we want to combine the two. We want to do it within the node group and we forgot to expose the actual right shader thing for this. So let's go back into our node group here. And over here, we have the mix shader with the one input that is empty. We can take this input 
and plug it into the group input here as well. And if we now go out of our node group over here, you will see we now have it exposed over there. If we now take our principal BSDF, which was the basic shader we had for our text, and we plug it into the node group there, let it load for a bit, and there you go. All right, so what you'll see now is that we actually have the original metal material over here. So if I change the transition to zero, it's completely there. And if I now move it over here, you will see it starts eating away at it, dissolving the text until it's completely gone. And we can now actually animate this transition. So let's open up a new window here, drag it up, change it to a timeline. And on frame one, let's set our transition to zero and let's hit I while hovering over it. And on frame 250, let's go up to one here and set it to I again. And this will completely do the transition for us. Important to note though, is that I want these to be linear keyframes. So in the timeline here, let's hit T and choose linear interpolation. There you go, that's looking perfect. All right, now before we start working on the particles, let me show you how to get the black background while still using the HDRI texturing. So that's a pretty neat trick I've picked up a couple of years ago and we can do it in the shading as well. So hop on over to the world shading instead of the object shading. And in here you should see your HDRI, a background node and the world output. Now let's add in a mix shader here as well. Plug that in between. And now for the magic, let's add in a light path node. Take the is camera ray output and plug it into the fact. Now what this does, it will keep all of the lighting of the HDRI, but it will only show the second shader in the camera. So basically black because we don't have a shader at all. And that's why you'll still get the lighting and the background will be black. So that's a neat trick and it really adds to the effect in this case. Let's start working on our particle system. First thing you'll notice is that on the right hand here, there's no option to actually add in particles. And that's because we are currently working with a text object. You might not be, so then just skip this step. In my case, this is a text object. So I need to go into the object menu here, look up convert and convert it into a mesh. So now our text object is a mesh and we have the particle option available now. Let's click on the particle system here, add in a new one, which I'm going to call dissolve. And I'm going to call the particle settings dissolve as well. And I will be previewing this constantly and I will be changing all of these settings from top to bottom so we can get the right result. First of all, I need a few more particles. I want to go for about 10 K. So that's quite a lot, but it will look better uh, in, in a bit. So now we want to start this and end this in the uh, right time. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to disable the effect here so it's not visible and then look up the part where my text really starts dissolving and I think it's around frame 80 or so. So yeah, here it's really starting. So I'm going to set the frame start for the particles to be 80. Now I want to know when it's done. So that seems to be, you know, about 180 or so doesn't have to be perfect. So let's set it to 180. And next what we want to do is we want to change the lifetime. Now, the lifetime for the particles should never be longer than the entire animation. So in this case, when it's 180, we still have about 70 frames left. So never set it higher than 70. In this case, I'm going to set it to 65, which will mean that by frame 245, all particles should have despawned. Let's see if that works. So here they come, looking absolutely gorgeous. And then, yep, there you go, the end. Um, this end at 180, they fall this fast, so you don't actually see them disappearing, but you know, believe me, it works. Now we want to set the lifetime random to be about 0.5 or so, just generating a few that live a little longer and a few that live a little shorter. Now, next up, we want to change the source, and instead of using faces, I'm going to use volume, which will make it look a bit more natural when all of these particles spawn outside of our volume, and instead of just popping out of our faces like so. We'll skip cache for now, and we'll skip velocity as well. Let's enable rotation and just, you know, randomize the face completely and then go into physics here and increase the dampening to be about 0.75 or so. And what you'll notice is that the particles are now falling way slower than before. So you can also see them disappearing now. And that's exactly what we want. Before continuing on to the render tab over here, let's just add in an actual object which we can use as a particle. So I'm going to add in an icosphere, shift A icosphere. Let's open up this menu here and set the subdivisions to one. We don't need all that geometry there. Hit right click shade smooth and just pull this guy down. Just long way down. We don't need it in the scene anyways. Now let's add in a new material for this, which I'm going to call particle. And the only thing I'll do is actually change this to a bluish color to match the, um, the solve effect and set the emission strength to be about 10. 
this will still look like all of these white dots and that's because we need to change that so let's go back into our particle settings here and change the render as from halo to object now for the object let's select our icosphere which you can just disable now as well set the scale randomness to one and the actual size to be about 0.1 let's go 0.01 and you'll see we have all of these small tiny particles falling down and that's all looking just perfect however it's not random it's not flowing and it definitely doesn't look like what i showed you in the preview and that's because we need to add in a few forces so let's go ahead and do that first of all let's add in a turbulence force field so shift a force field turbulence now let's go over here to the physics properties and set the strength to be about 50. what you'll notice now is that i re-preview all of these particles going they start moving in a random or sort of chaotic way and it really sells the effect of the particles fading away and you know flowing away and disappearing and dissolving the actual object however they are still falling down and i don't want that i want them to go up maybe you know like they're just fading into the sky so what we'll do next is add another force field in this case a wind so force field a wind there it is move this to the side a little bit rotate it so it flows sort of upwards to the left or any other direction if you want a different direction but for me upwards to the left really works and I'm just going to set the strength here to be about 30. And now if we preview it, there you go. Look at all of them just going in a nice angular direction, flowing away. And it really, really sells the effect of the text dissolving. So I think this looks really, really good. What you could do now, if you want to make sure that your viewport still works nice and fast, is you could bake it. So you could go into cache here and then hit bake. And it will bake out the animation so it doesn't have to simulate it every time. Also, if you go over to field weights here, we can change the influence our turbulence and wind have by changing both values over here. So if I set this to zero, you will see everything is gone. There's no more wind. And if I increase it, it will be more and more affected by it. Same could be set for the turbulence. If we keep it like this, there's hardly any turbulence. And if we set it back to one, there's a lot of turbulence. So that's a nice way of controlling and really fine tuning the effect overall. All right, so that takes us to the render settings. And in this case, I'm using full HD, 30 FPS, one to 250 uh, for the animation. Choose a save location of your choosing. And in this case, because it's an EV render, so it's pretty light in your computer, I'm gonna use an FFmpeg video as the file format output. Go into the encoding tab and change the container to MP4. Set the output quality to be perceptually lossless. And if you add audio in Blender, by the way, you can do this over here in the video editing workspace. So if you do, then please make sure to set the audio codec to AAC, which is the most compatible codec for most devices. So leave it at that and you should be good to go. You can now render everything out. So that wraps up the video and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. And if you did, then please leave a like and subscribe and please consider becoming a patron. It really helps support the channel and it gives you access to over 40 project files, including some nice assets if you join the higher up tiers. I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Thanks to the following patrons for supporting this channel. If your name is up here, I appreciate the support and you're amazing.